morning and happy Easter. My name is Pastor Penny Bonsell from Finlayson United Methodist Church and Sandstone United Church of Christ. And today we welcome you to join us. Christ is risen. Christ is risen indeed. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord from the heavens. Praise the Lord in the heights. Let them praise the name of the Lord, whose name alone is exalted, whose glory is above earth and heaven. Jesus said, I am the resurrection and the life. Those who believe in me, even though they die, will live, and everyone who lives and believes in me will never die. God, by the resurrection of Jesus Christ, you broke the power of death and opened the way to eternal life. As the empty tomb stands witness to his triumph over death, make your church to be a bold testimony to his enduring victory in life, that all we do may proclaim to the world, he is risen indeed, through Christ who lives with you and the Holy Spirit now and forever. Amen. I'll be reading from Psalm 118, verses 1 and 2, and 14 through 24. Give thanks to the Lord, for He is good. His love endures forever. Let Israel say, His love endures forever. The Lord is my strength and my defense. He has become my salvation. Shouts of joy and victory resound in the tents of the righteous. The Lord's right hand has done mighty things. The Lord's right hand is lifted high. The Lord's right hand has done mighty things. I will not die but live and will proclaim what the Lord has done. The Lord has chastened me severely, but he has not given me over to death. Open for me the gates of the righteous. I will enter and give thanks to the Lord. This is the gate of the Lord, through which the righteous may enter. 
I will give you thanks for your answered me. You have become my salvation. The stone the builders rejected has become the cornerstone. In the Lord has done this, and it is marvelous in our eyes. The Lord has done it this very day. Let us rejoice today and be glad. A reading from Luke. On the first day of the week, at early dawn, they came to the tomb, taking the spices that they had prepared. They found the stone rolled away from the tomb. But when they went in, they did not find the body. While they were perplexed about this, suddenly two men in dazzling clothes stood beside them. The women were terrified and bowed their faces to the ground. But the men said to them, why do you look for the living among the dead? He is not here, but has risen. Remember how he told you while he was still in Galilee that the Son of Man must be handed over to sinners, crucified, and on the third day rise again? Then they remembered his words. And returning from the tomb, they told all this to the eleven and to all the rest. Now it was Mary Magdalene, Joanna, Mary, the mother of James, and the other women with them who told this to the apostles. But these words seemed to them an idle tale, and they did not believe them. But Peter got up and ran to the tomb, stooping and looking in. He saw the linen cloths by themselves. Then he went home amazed at what had happened. These are the words of God for the people. Thanks be to God. Christ is risen. Christ is risen indeed. It's Easter, Easter morning. And today we get to read the resurrection story from the Gospel of Luke from chapter 24. The women come with spices that they have prepared and they are exhausted and they're weary and they're sleep deprived and they're mourning the loss of Jesus. And then as we read, as they get to the tomb, they find the stone has been rolled away. And when they go inside, they can't find a body. Where was Jesus? Where did he go? And yet in this tomb, they meet two men in dazzling clothing, symbolizing an angelic message. Now, the Gospel of Luke is also similar to the Gospel of Mark, yet in the Mark version, the women are unnamed, and we find one man in white robe, also symbolizing an angelic message. We also get a similar message from the book of Acts in chapter 10, where Cornelius is also visited by a man in dazzling attire who speaks to him and says, go find Simon Peter. Now, as we continue in today's reading, these men in dazzling clothing, they come and they stand beside these women and these women are terrified and they put their faces down to the ground because they are so scared. And this is where these two men say to them, why do you look for the living among the dead? 
He's not here, but he's risen. Do you remember what he said to you when he was in Galilee? That he would have to be taken in by sinners and then crucified, and then in three days would be risen. And at this point in the reading, the women remember what he said, and they get up, and they leave the tomb, and they go to tell the other eleven and all the rest. This resurrection story and the other resurrection stories in the other Gospels invite us to imagine what is happening on this Easter morning. What if we were con to consider the impact of the story on those who were witnesses and lived their lives bearing witness to this story? What if we were to turn to the Acts of the Apostles and reflect on how to be a witness to Easter, not just on this one glorious day, but every day. Sometimes you tell the story best when you see what the story did to those who heard it, like Peter. In Acts chapter 10, 34 through 43, is the Easter story born witness through the life of one who heard what happened that day when God raised him. We are witnesses to all that he did. So in today's reading, Mary Magdalene, Johanna, Mary the mother of James, and the other women who were with them left to go tell the apostles what they had witnessed. But then we read, the apostles received their words as an idle tale, and they didn't believe them. But then it was Peter who got up and ran to the tomb, and then he saw the linen cloths by themselves, and he went home amazed at what had happened. As Rob Verquay writes about the power of the cross in his book, Passion Play, Living the Story of Christ's Last Days, which is inspired by the Passion Play held in Oberammergau, Germany, a little town located in the Bavarian Alps. Rob writes, the cross declares God's authority over the evil of the world because God transforms rather than eradicates evil. For many of us, eradicating evil seems like a better plan. But what else would be removed as well? What would be lost if we lose the ability to choose between good and evil? What would be the loss of freedom to choose our response to suffering? What would become of love if there was nothing or anything unloving? It is through pain that we come to want with greater desire that which is good and pure and loving. It's like that dazzling love that Jesus has been speaking about in his three years of ministry, continuously speaking of love, God's love, and peace. And how do we do this on earth as it is in heaven? And where do we find resurrection in our own lives? Not just once a year when we think about Easter Sunday, but how do we experience resurrection throughout all the experiences in our daily lives? How do we find a new and life-giving way? How do we find resurrections in all of these moments? I think that's what Jesus is inviting us to do each and every day. In this little town of Oberammergau in Germany, in 1634, they made a vow to God 
to perform a passion play, which was a gift, a way to show their love and faith to God. They were presented with a pandemic similar to ours today, most likely the bubonic plague, and it was killing people in their little town. So they prayed to God to be safe, and they promised to perform the passion play of Jesus Christ every 10 years if they could get through this pandemic. And they did. And they performed their first passion plays on the graveyard in the cemetery of those that they had lost. Well, that play has been going on now for many years, many centuries. And it was supposed to be performed again in the year 2020. And yet this little passion play, which had begun because of a pandemic, was once again interrupted by the pandemic that we've lived through in the last couple of years. It was postponed two years, but is now being presented again this summer in 2022. This is a passion play that is performed by all the people who live in Oberammergau. You can't be in the play unless you live there or unless you have lived there for 20 years or if you married somebody, you get a discount of 10 years in order to be in this play. But what's interesting about this play that speaks of the resurrection story today is that all of this little town come together to prepare and to put this message on stage. Jesus' message, God's message of love and peace and coming into a new way each and every day. They have to take their own lives and put them aside. They have to put arguments and maybe disagreements on the side in order to take up and play the roles of the story of Jesus Christ in the last few days of his life. And in that, by preparing a play, they live into the story of Christ. And then they invite the whole world to come and be a witness to this play. Just as the women today in the resurrection story from Jesus were dazzled by these men in dazzling white clothing, they were reminded of the dazzling love that Jesus invited them to be a part of. And as we read this story today, we too are invited to experience and continue to be a witness to the dazzling love of God that Jesus Christ has shared with us. Christ is risen. Christ is risen indeed. Amen.
Jesus of the people. And when you hear me say, God of resurrection, will you please respond with, hear our prayer. Let us unite our hearts in prayer, saying, God of resurrection, hear our prayer. For the church throughout the world, that as we celebrate the feast of Jesus' resurrection, we may renew our faith and strengthen our witness in Jesus' name. God of resurrection, hear our prayer. For pastors, teachers, and ministers, that they may be wise in leadership, humble in service, and fearless in the face of evil. God of resurrection, hear our prayer. For the government of the world and its leaders, that they may practice compassion and reject the politics that use death and suffering as means of control. God of resurrection, hear our prayer. For the planet Earth, that people may be good stewards of its resources and share in its abundance. God of resurrection, hear our prayer. For the sick and those in distress, that they may find healing for their pain and be restored to fullness of life. God of resurrection, hear our prayer. For our neighbors, that together we may dwell in harmony. God of resurrection, hear our prayer. For our enemies, that we may love them and be agents of reconciliation in the name of Jesus, God of resurrection, hear our prayer. Almighty God, receive these prayers we offer and by the power of your Holy Spirit, use us for the sake of the gospel of Jesus Christ. In his name we pray, amen. Join us in singing, I Come With Joy, our communion hymn, number 617 in the United Methodist Hymnal. We now enter into a time of Holy Communion. Before we had established church buildings, people gathered in their homes to have communion with one another. And so here we are virtually, we invite you to join us. So I invite you to find some bread, crackers, juice, a beverage of some kind, and come join us in Holy Communion virtually. May the God of all be with you, and also with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to God. 
Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give thanks and praise to you. It is right and a good and joyful thing, always and everywhere, to give thanks to you. Creator, God, breath of heaven. You invite us to cleanse our hearts and to see one another in this Lenten journey and to travel with you. You invite us to prepare with joy a meal renewed by your word and sacraments. And so with the people on earth and all company of heaven, we praise your name and join in their unending song. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. O oh God, guide us to that intimate relationship with you and with all whom we meet. Help us stop and pause, listen and learn. Just as the disciples heard Christ's words of promise and began to eat the bread and drink the wine in the suffering of a long remembrance and in the joy of hope, Grant that we may hear your words spoken in each thing in everyday affairs. May simple things speak to us of your mercy and tell us that life can be good. And may the sacramental gifts make us remember those who do not receive them. Christ was also sacrificed. And may we learn that we participate in the saving sacrifice of Christ when we participate in the suffering of his little ones. Amen. Christ invites us today to sit with him at a table. And we as United Methodists and United Church of Christ we practice an open table. All are welcome. All who are seeking to follow Jesus Christ, come. On the night in which he gave himself up for us, he took bread and he gave thanks to you. and he broke the bread. And he gave it to all the disciples around the table. And he said, take, eat, this is my body, which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. On the same night, after supper, he took the cup and he gave thanks to you and he gave it to all the disciples around the table and he said drink from this all of you this is my blood this is my life a new covenant poured out for you for the forgiveness of sins do this as often as you drink it in remembrance of me And so in remembrance of these, your mighty acts in Jesus Christ, we offer ourselves in praise and thanksgiving as a holy and living sacrifice in union with Christ. Christ's offering for us as we proclaim the mysteries of faith. Christ has died, Christ has risen, and Christ will come again. Pour out our Holy Spirit on all who are gathered here and on these gifts of bread and wine. Make these gifts for us be the body and the blood of Christ. And by your Spirit we bring into the world, thus in your holy church, all honor and glory are yours. 
Almighty God, now and forever. Amen. And the prayer in which Christ joins us. Our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this, our daily bread, and forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. These are your gifts of bread and wine, that we may receive them according to your Son, Jesus Christ. We who are many are one body, the body of Christ in many places, in many languages all around the world. The bread we break is sharing the body of Christ. The cup over which we give thanks is sharing the blood and the life of Christ. Come, the table is ready. This is the body of Christ, given for you. This is the blood of Christ, poured out and shed for you. Amen. Eternal God, we give thanks for you. For this holy mystery in which you have given yourself, grant that we, with the Holy Spirit, may go into the world and share your love in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. you could join us today for worship. Happy Easter, and may the living Christ live in you. God sends you, the Spirit fills you, Christ goes with you, and you with Christ, always and everywhere. Let us share our shalom.
Go in peace, dear friends.